Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio, yo, special guest in the building. We got a legend in the building. The yeah. one, the only cranium is in the building. Only one. Welcome to the show, my Welcome brother. Brother. Before we get into anything, right? Because we've already been chopping it up a little bit on the side. Like, I want to give you your flowers, man. Because yeah. um, I was in college from 2014 to 2018, right? Yeah. And I don't think that there was a single party that I went to that they didn't play your records at. Facts. Your records were so important. And your records were so important to my college experience yeah. during that time. So I just want to give you a little bit of your flowers. Let Respect. you know that. I appreciate that. Especially here, being from New York, yeah. you're appreciated here. Your music is loved here. And you are loved here. So I just want to say that man. real quick before we start anything. I appreciate that, bro. Of course, man. Yeah, man. How you been? I've been good. I've been been good. You know what I mean? It's been a very strange time, but I've, I feel finally start getting behind the whole COVID thing. So now it's like <laughs> I feel half back to life in the sense of like just a vibe on people just being free and just being, you know what I mean? There's a good spirit. I feel like I, I love the spirit that's moving forward since 2021. Like I really love it. It was a strange time because of COVID or just like the space? Yeah, I feel that like you were it was through? just a dark time. It was like too much going on and like. You know, the place was just feel very dark and very heavy. I feel like now it start feeling light. Like, I feel like it's getting back pre-COVID, if that makes sense, in that sense. No, definitely. Like, even like, you know, us talking about being at, me being at Rolling Loud this weekend, it felt like, felt like things were semi-back yeah. to normal. Like, I wouldn't, I was literally watching somebody perform, and I'm like, damn, I can't believe that, like, <laughs> we were inside for, like, a year and a half of our lives. Fox. We didn't do any, I mean, I'm, we yeah. moved around a little bit, but. We didn't really do anything for that long. And it's weird to think that that was even a time of our lives, too. Yeah, it just feel free. I just feel like it's a free time. I just, I'm happy. Like, I'm in a great mind mentally. Like, mentally, I'm in a good spirit. Right, because yeah. I've been, you know, you've been talking about how, like, you haven't dropped in a while. Like, and yeah. obviously, now we got the record out with Queen Niger, which is a great record. But you have been quiet for a while. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It, it, the thing is, like, um, anybody who is a real creative fan, know that I don't really drop much music. I, like, I have this quality control thing about me where... I don't like to oversaturate the market. And I just don't. I just want to be the artist that when my left, when it's all said and done, be like, yo, I've never heard a Wack Cranium record. Right. So for me, it's like, I, I've, I've, I've record a bunch of songs and just like pick one song. You know what I mean? It's just like COVID. Like I held, I held it down for Dance Hall in COVID, you know, because Girl Policy is one of the biggest records that came out during the whole COVID time. Right. So, um, and that was just because, as I said, you know, I still like records and be very um, specific on how I drop. I don't really like to rush. You rush in, you rush out. So for me, it's like the pace that I'm always on is always good for me. Right. Yeah. I feel like every time you drop, like you said, like that record specifically, all of the um, <clears throat> the underground, you know, <laughs> COVID yeah. parties I was at, yeah, yeah. that record would always play too. And it's it's crazy because I, cause I, I feel that. Because yeah. it's like every time I feel like you drop, it's calculated. Yeah. But the record is always big. Yeah, always big. And, 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 and for a level of like, you know, dancehall music, what I look at is like, dancehall music is not priority in the state, it's a flavor. Mm. You know what I mean? So for me, it's just like, okay, how can I add uh, my garlic powder? Or how can I add my salt? You know what I mean? Because as I said, it's not a priority, it's just like a flavor of doing it. So for me, it's more like just be very calculated on how I drop. And I don't really watch crowd, I don't watch cloud. I'm not a cloud artist, I don't do dumb things for any type of vibe. Yeah. You know, so I've, my career is always a stem from this natural talent. If right. that makes sense. No, definitely makes sense. And yeah. like you said, you're calculated with it. So, and I love how you're, you know, I don't think a lot of artists have the luxury that you do. Well, also because you're just so, you're, you're such an incredible artist yourself that like when you drop, people are always going to tune in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once it's done, good. Once it's, yeah, once, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, done, good. once it's done, yeah, good. Yeah, once it's done, good. I feel like people always, and I just say things that everybody afraid to say. Yeah, I feel that's what it is. Like my music is very sexual. I'm a very ranchy person. Like, like, I'm a very sexual, you know, like, that's what women love. So it's like anytime me speak on it, I speak on it in a, in a way where everybody's afraid to say it. This is probably like one of the first records in a while I drop where it's more like, okay, subtle, calm, cool, chill, you know? So, yeah. Why did you want this one to be a little more, um, I guess, uh, tamer than records you dropped in the past? I feel like I just want ex- to broaden the, the whole catalog and like broaden the way old people listen to me. And, you know, sometimes versatility is very important and how you... you, 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 you um, you know, you, you gain fans are, are getting new people are um there's certain place I wanna be like how can I get a record that play in a wedding? Or can I get a record that play in a car with a child? You know what I mean? So I feel like that's where I wanna go because the next singles that I'm dropping or the next project I'm dropping have a lot of dirty stuff. So I just wanted to have like <laughs> that one record about this and it's plus it's a very good record. It's a great record. Like, yeah, Queen Queen has just sound amazing on the record and it's a dope record. Right, because like when I putting y'all two together, it's like all right, like from like a, a fan's perspective, I'm like 
he hasn't dropped in a while. Yeah. Queen Niger, interesting choice for a feature. You know what I'm saying? I'm not upset about it, but I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. So like going in and um, you know, the record's out now, and I really like it too. Like I really think that you and Queen Niger very much complimented each other on this record. Like yeah. it didn't feel forced. That's I think the biggest thing for me. It didn't yeah, feel forced. It wasn't forced. I mean, it took a while to get that record out, but a whole different story but yeah that's a whole different story yeah. but i mean like the fact that it that you know that we're here now and we get to enjoy it i think it, it's great it's, it's good yeah it's it's good it's as i said it's like patient and time and um just me being me and just being relaxed i'm not i'm not forcefully i'm not a rushing i don't rush nothing you know you're rushing as i said you rush out so i just take my time and do my thing Right, so we're working on this. Uh, so this is obviously the first single leading into this new project, yeah. this new era of your of your uh, career. Yeah. Um, this project, what can, I know we can't say a lot because it's probably we're, we're still a little ways out. But what can you tell me about this project? It's um, just some dope features. Um, I have Young Blue, I have Dexter, um, obviously Queen Niger. I have some, I have some people when I add in some records. It's dope. Like I love it. It's probably one of my favorite. Records. That's honestly it's one of my favorite projects. I'm not even trying to guess anything. It's like one of my favorite. <laughs> Project. I feel like I went above and beyond uh, musically. Um, I take some chances on this on the record. Like a lot of people who hear this record, be like, "Yo, this is like a R and B." Some people like, "Yo, this is like a." Um, some people hear Afrobeat. Some people hear different vibe. But it's like music. I'm a musician. That's what I do. I make music. I don't like to categorize myself. And as I be an artist who break from the state as a dancer artist, that was like one of the. It's one of the craziest thing. You know, even me sometimes can't even explain how it happened. Or uh, why it happened, and I mean, I would like to say I believe in myself to the point where not even believe because I don't believe in myself, I know myself, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, belief is the biggest doubt. So, yeah, I know myself, so yeah, I feel like that's what really get it there. You and Blue, I think, is a great combo yeah, as well. Bad. I think you and bad. Blue is a great combo Sick. as well. Because Blue, for me, right now, as like a young artist, is probably one of the most, in my, in my mind, is like he's like one of the most diverse artists right now like he could do a record with anybody and it sounds like i think of the Nicki minaj record he just did that record is, is yeah. incredible so i think that you and blue i don't know what the record i haven't heard it yet yeah. obviously but like i think that that's going to be a very special one yeah too. man he's tone you have a dope tone yeah yeah and i feel like we in a time now where people love tone rather than singing singing if that makes sense like mm. being a singer is great but being a singer with a tone is a problem I feel like we're more attached to it. You remember back in the two thousands, early was like you could sing, sing. It's like, oh, it's amazing. No, it's like that 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 raspy tone or that that unique, you know what I mean? That that key that you're singing. I feel like we're in a tone era in music. It's all about tone. Tone. You could be the best singer, nobody cares. But you could have the dopest tone ever. Like, this is dope. You know, like future have a dope tone. Right. The sound, it's it's not little baby have a sick tone. Um, little Dirk, you know that key. Even though they're not singer singers, but when they open the mouth and they, they project certain words, you just have that unique niche to it. And I feel like that's where we're at in music now. Right, because I feel like you know at some point everybody was like, all right, we have a lot of good singers, right? Yeah. Everybody's singing really good, right? Everybody's great. Yeah. Now, how do you diversify yourself at that point? You know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like the rise of these artists, you know, like you said, like the tone is so important tone is now where it is. because it's like everybody. I'm not saying everybody sounded the same at one point, yeah. but it's just like we all know that X, Y, and Z. These artists are really good singers, but now it's like, all right, everybody's a good singer. Yeah. So what comes next? And then now it's about like the tone, the tone. delivery. That's really what it is now. That's it's not all it about is. a good singer. All it is for me right now is like everybody's a singer. Mm. It's especially with attitude and everything. Everybody can sing, but you can't. You, you, you can't, you, yeah, the, the tone is where it's at for me. Like, for me to like an artist right now, mm. the tone. I love how we were uh, we were talking a little bit about Afrobeats. Yeah. And you was talking your shit because you was like, when did you do your first record with WizKid? Uh, my first record with WizKid is 2015. Okay. So yeah. just so y'all know, Cranium, Cranium saw the video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was on tour. You know, we, we, we tour, I tour a lot. You know, I get, give thanks to music. I get to tour the world a lot. I think the only continent I haven't been in is Antarctica. I've been to every continent at this <laughs> point. But, um, yeah, man, I saw it coming, like, early. Or oh, the gate, man, I say, yo, this look like it's going to be a problem. And the, the thing about it is, when you talk about key dance, I don't think no... Right now, I'm going to say this play. I feel like there's no genre that has cadence like Afrobeat right now. The cadence is crazy, very melodic, and then you can hear the dance all in it a lot, you know what I mean? And and just the, 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 the back to the tone, you know. When you hear Burner Boy tone, it's like Jesus Christ, and you can't deny the tone there. You can't deny a whiskey tone. You can't deny a Thames tone, you know. It's there, and I feel like um, a side coming, like, and I was so happy that I get the chance to, like, really... Um, understand it because me is the type of person I don't dabble into things that I don't know you know I gave myself enough time to like understand it and um, 
feel the, the, the vibe and, 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 and see the movement because Afrobeat to me is not a genre, it's a movement. It's bigger than just a genre for them. It's a, it's a whole movement where um, I'm happy to be a part of in the sense of like, you know, collaborate and shout out to all of the artists that are great in Afrobeat and shout out to all the upcoming artists that in Afrobeat and big up dance all straight here. Yeah. Right, because like I, even you know, I brought up uh, the the Burner Boy record that you did with him on on your last yeah, project, yeah, and that yeah. was twenty nineteen. Yeah, but uh, Burner did already up there still. Burner was shooting. Yeah, yeah, Burner, yeah, yeah, Burner yeah. was shooting. But, but it was before Last Last and everything that yeah, happened yeah, this yeah, year, yeah. obviously, yeah. like before yeah. he like catapulted at yeah. this year too. Because that's music, no. We and and that's back to the thing. We in a, we in a era in music where um, it take that one record for people to recognize the greatness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because these are guys have been great, you know what I'm saying? But as I said, like, whiskey get his essence and everything, just like, yeah, people, like, him being bad, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's been dope. And what I love about, for me, it's, and like, for me, it's like, I don't worry about, I could speak for myself, I don't really worry about what nobody thinks, I don't know what nobody feels. I worry about making a great record and whatever happen, happen with it. That's how I just look at it. So everything that you do before will actually be highlighted based off of that one record that bring all the eyes. Because all you need is the attention and the eyes, no, nothing more. I can't do the cloud thing. I'd rather do the music thing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree. You definitely do the music thing. Yeah, me can't buy the cloud thing. He's a straight musician. You're talking about, uh, you brought up touring around the world, and um, I know like you've been to the UK quite a bit recently, right? Yeah. And um, one, I watched those videos, and I saw you tweeting. You just you love the UK at this point. It's like yeah, UK is like my second one. I'm, I'm about to I'm about to buy an apartment in UK to be <laughs> honest. Like, and, and I'm being I like really serious. Like, I mean, I'm soon find a whole um, yeah nice place and just relaxing. You, I love UK, man. UK is a vibe. Like, UK is a vibe, vibe, vibe. I was gonna say you was out there for Carabana? Yeah, I was there for um for um you mean um not Carabana, because Carabana is Canada. I was there for Carnival weekend. Carnival that was yeah. the end of August, mm. right? Yes. End I was August. there the twenty seventh, I think, yes. And I, I just went, I just went back the other day. I did that next show in Manchester. <sighs> yeah. How was it? Great. It was great. It was a great because they're very musical. These people yes. are people who just love music. They no matter the genre, once they love you, they love you. And UK to me right now have the power. Um of stage shows, them they're leading right now. It's stage when it comes to show and love. Mm. UK have it down pat right now. Right now, I give it to UK. UK, I, 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 I love performing in UK. AJ Tracy always tells me about how crazy Carnival is over, yeah, over there too. Big up AJ, yeah, yeah, Dope. yeah, man. And I and he told me, he actually it was funny because he told me to come in at the end of August, but yeah. I was working on this studio. And then like when I saw the videos of you out there, I was like, yeah, man, it's and right. he was telling me, I was like, damn, I should have gone out there. Yeah, man, it's, it's AJ know what he's talking about. Show the AJ because we have a, a big record together. Yeah, 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 yeah. On, on, your, on the last album, on the last album too. Yeah, mad. But that's also like a cool thing between like you know having a rapper like AJ and doing a song with you too. Like yeah. that shit to me is is really dope. Also, because that's like something that I wouldn't necessarily have seen coming. But when the when the album came out and that record was on it, I was like, oh shit, like AJ. Yeah, yeah. I remember my cousin called me up the blues and was like, hey, I hear this song of you on a video game. I was like, video game? I didn't even know the song was in Grand Theft Auto. Oh, oh they added it to Grand Theft <laughs> yeah, Auto yeah, too? Yeah, they added it. I didn't even know. My cousin called me up and said, like, yeah, man, hear your voice. I'm sure it's your voice. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right around right, and grab them auto to you and AJ. It's crazy. Because they keep updating. The, I know that they, uh, I had this conversation the other day with somebody. They keep updating the radio stations in the game. Yeah. Like, I think for a couple of years they didn't update it because it was on the old console. So now they, like, add new songs yeah. all the time. So I guess at some point after the record came out. Yeah, they added it. And she, yeah, he called me. He's like, you mean, yeah, your song with AJ Trace. I was like, dope. I didn't, I didn't even know. That's fire. Yeah. We were talking also, Um, you were sharing like a story, like you and Prodigy, God rest Prodigy. Yeah, my like, rest in peace, Prodigy. Way back, apparently. Way back. I know Prodigy since I was in high school. Yeah, so I remember the first time seeing Tony. Yeah, imagine as a kid, I'm seeing Tony, yeah, Light Banks, all of them. <clears throat> I used to be, yeah, by Queensbridge. Um, shout out to Prodigy, the man. And Prodigy was one of the, maybe, I, you know what's crazy? Sometimes people say, yo, you're so humble. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe it's because I've been around. <laughs> Prodigy is one of the most humblest artists in history. Mm-hmm. Like, Praji is one of the coolest guy that I've ever known, and I, like he's like a mentor. A matter of fact, like me and Praji went to the city multiple times by ourselves, just mm-hmm. like walking or strolling. And first time I went to Summer Jam, it was with them and Bully. Um, so yeah, man, me and Praji go way back, man. And Praji, you know, as I said, rest in peace. Praji is a good youth, great youth, and and the funny thing about it is like a lot of advice that I get in music came from Prejudy. Cause, really? Yeah, he believed in me. If it's one person who knew I was going to make it, it was him. Like, he, 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 the man just, I, the man just knew. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but he always said, Yo, you're talented as hell. But he never yet tried to force me to sign. I never yet bring no, none of that type. He just always loved, like, I go to the studio, 
And I'm seeing everybody come to that. Shout out to Waka, me and Waka became friends, very cool. Waka, Waka Flaka is like my real dog, my big brother. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I remember when they did the record with French Montana. All them, so I was around them. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You was always in New York. I was always <laughs> in New York and always in the studio. I seen everybody come and go, like everybody. So One of my yeah. favorite things that Prodigy you ever done was his um, commissary kitchen cookbook. Yeah, the cook, yeah. Yeah, that's when I met Prodigy. I was young, I was like 19 years old. Yeah, but that's yeah. when I met him when he put out that cookbook. And yeah. it was like all like just jail meals that you can make at home. <laughs> and like I was there when he he like made some ramen noodles with like Doritos, dust. And it was, oh, it's crazy. He was, it was it, like you said, he was just humble, man. He yeah, was just chilling, hanging out, making, making some commissary kitchen. Very positive mind thinking very powerful thinker if, if you're not mentally there you can't hold a conversation with project because project is a very deep um smart man you know very smart and 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 very reading books and you know what i mean that's that's p for you long live prodigy man yeah man most definitely um i saw you've been watching house of dragons yes what's your review so far i haven't watched it yet i'm binge i'm gonna try to binge when it's done but what's so, your review so far it's, it's for me honestly it's good but you know what i do though i wait till like <laughs> I, I wait. No, what I do is I, I don't like to watch and then wait for it to come next week. I don't have that patience. So right now I just stop and I'm waiting for like the next couple, you know what I mean, mm. the couple episodes and then I start watching it because I don't want to stop. I always want to go through it. Because when I watch, shout out to the girl. Listen, I was talking to this girl. I can't curse, right? <laughs> you can curse. You. She have the best crease in her world. <laughs> You know, so good to the point she convinced me to sit and watch Game of Thrones. And our crease was so good. I said, if she tell me it's good, I watch the whole thing, Game of Thrones, and when I have best game of So shout out to that good girl. I can't call her name, but <laughs> big up here in crease, yeah. <laughs> but Game of Thrones is one of the most amazing shows I've ever watched, and it held me down throughout the whole um, time that I was doing my thing. And yeah, Game of Thrones. I haven't watched, like I said, I'm like you. Like, I, I feel like because we're so busy that, yeah. like, when you do sit down and you watch a show, you got to just do it all in one shot because you don't got time to do it, like, week to week and whatever. Trust me, Game of Thrones is one of the greatest things. So now that host of um, Dragon Start, I want to wait a little bit longer. before, yeah. A little longer. I, got, I'm, I need to call her to and tell her, hey, let's do it, like, hold this. Because I haven't seen her in a while, but everything good. <laughs> You're going to use House of Dragon Start? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, yo, we gotta get like, um, oh man, it's like, uh, like if one of the few, you know, the future meme where he like texts in, yeah, yeah. And you're gonna, some House of Dragons captain, you're gonna be like, I miss you, come I on, I miss you, me. let's go, you know what I mean? Yeah, short, 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 short. shout out to her, Mama, yeah, Jesus Christ. Speaking of love, you were talking about like on Twitter, like about love being blind, right? Mm -hmm. do, you do you believe that? That love is blind? Yes. 100%. I've seen girls walking around with dragons and think they're in love. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've seen like, you ever see some, but you know what it is, people are. Yeah, you ever been? You never been with somebody and be like, look back and like, what the hell was I thinking? I'm pretty sure there's girls oh, yeah, looking, the yeah, yeah. looking back at us like, yeah, what were they thinking? To you know what I mean? It's one of them things. Love is really blind, man. Because when you're in love, I think it blocks everything that um that you you can't really see the true thing of the people until you break. When you break up with somebody, you start realizing how oh, fucked up they were. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, Shit, but. me this summer. Yeah, so <laughs> it was one of them things where when I, when I made the tweet, I was like, yo, love is really blind. I've never really been. In them situation is still but like what you realize after the fact you're like oh damn. like you start realizing everything after the fact it's like i love everybody i'm with okay let's put it that way so if, me have, if i have three girls at once me love i'll try them yeah <laughs> but then but do you realize like the the things because you were just saying like it's like when you break up with someone then you start realizing everything right yeah. do you realize those things after or you're because you said you love all them right yeah but when i don't i don't you know what's crazy like, is there any way I can knock pause? But I've never really had no bad situation in mm. love. Like, I don't know what, I, I don't never, I never experienced anything that got me to the point when I get out, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna hate that person. Because me, if, if me and a girl break up, if I'm in love with somebody, mm. and I break up somebody, I feel like me eat everything. You know, me eat where they come from, eat the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, I eat the dog, you know, I eat everything. So for me, I've never reached that point in a relationship with anybody after we stop talking. So I don't know if I was ever even in love, if that makes sense. Mm. I don't know if I've ever been in love to even know. But I just feel like I've seen things when you have somebody stopped talk that you didn't realize while it was with them. So I don't know if it's love. Maybe I'm confused. Right. I yeah. feel you. Because it's like, what, like, I don't know, not to get like super deep into it, but it's yeah. like what really is like that type of like true yeah. love. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, I've really never is. been in love. I've been in love with pussy, but I've never really been in love with the person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, 
And that and and if you want to know how spicy he's gonna be talking on his new album, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For listening to the project for Earwag one, because I I went into the crazy enough. The, the the actual the actual name of the project is In Too Deep. In Too Deep. Yeah, because I've talked some shit and that shit. Like some real talk. Like I say things. <laughs> remember, my songs is talking about washing dick in the sink and all that type of shit. So, you know, I'll be talking some things where we all do, but nobody is really want to say it. But I say it, I don't care. But you be saying, yeah, you I'll be, be saying the shit. shit. Now, this Queen Nigel record. But on the next record. On the, the next, next record, yeah. We, we're going to, yeah, get back to that point where I'm going to start my mind. I don't care. Yeah. I'd never give a fuck. I've, I'll, in my records, nobody has to know we're talking about cheating. Can't believe with whiskey we're talking about cheating last night. You know, we talk about everything that really happens that people are afraid to say. Because I've always been the guy on the side. I've never really been the main guy. I've always been the guy on the side for some weird reason. You've always been the guy on the side? I've always been the guy on the How? side. How? I don't know. I think you just follow me. Maybe I'm just doing God's work. I don't know. At this point, <laughs> brother, I feel like say, my, I always end up in a situation where I am the guy that is literally like being comfort. Yeah, it's okay. You know, don't worry about it. And she's telling me, oh, I can't stand this. Motherfucker, and I'm like, listen, it's gonna be all right. What are you doing? Link up. Yeah, for real. Saying you always been the side guy is kind of crazy. I've always crazy. been the I side guy. I swear to you, I'm not. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I've always been the side guy. Always. I don't know why. What, if every girl I've ever met that I really like, I always have a fucking boyfriend. I, I wasn't gonna tell this story, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but nobody has to know, right? Yeah. Since, we, since we bring this up, I might as well tell it. I don't care. When I was dating this girl, right? That was like our song, mm -hmm. right? But that's because I was seeing another girl. <laughs> Okay. Seriously, at the time, and so the, you get it. Yeah, I get it. I was, I was. That it, was it was a side. It was a side girl. It was our. It was a side girl, and that was our song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, to, who said it best? You know what I mean? Like in my life, I feel like I'm always have a girl and a wife on the side. I was like 19, 21. I was, that story, by the way, <laughs> I'm 26 now. That was not <laughs> long ago. <laughs> That's the way to do it. I'm clearing myself. I'm clearing myself of any wrongdoing yeah. these past couple of years. That's well, that's not what the guys say, right? You just say it that way. I have a woman and I have a wife on the side. And keep it moving. <laughs> Make sense? In too deep on the way. <laughs> Yo, okay, so the album we're gonna get that soon. Yeah. Um I'm also trying to just prevent us from getting ourselves it's into fine. more trouble here. Uh, I got you. Don't worry about it. It's all me. I'm just talking. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to help you too, my you brother. No, I'm good. Me, I'm a great. You know, the, way, the thing is, I'm honest. Yeah. I feel like Who in a relationship, know? I don't want to go too deep in the relationship after the interview, but like in relationship, you just got to be honest. I feel like um, clarif you have to clarify things. You know, clarification is key. I yeah. feel like if, I, if you tell a woman as it is, it works better sometimes. Yeah. But most times, it's better to be honest. Better yeah. be honest. And everybody will be happy. She'll be happy, I'll be happy, we'll all be happy. One big happy family. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. And too deep on the way. And to, on the way. Um, new single Queen Nigel out now, so make sure y'all go stream that. Yeah, go get it, go stream it, do whatever you want to do with it, make love to it, um, play it at weddings, or whatever you want to do. It's dope. Before we get out of here, um, and we have you do this incredible performance I'm very excited for today, um, let the people know where they can follow you at, anything else you want to let them know, now's the time to do with this camera right here. Yeah, man, so this is Kieran, big up on yourself. Thanks for your love and support, I appreciate it. Check out my brand new single right now called Without You, featuring Queen Nigel. Project is coming, follow me on Instagram, you can DM me, you know what I mean? I like to be the side, guys. Hello. <laughs> he likes to be the side guy in too deep on the way new single with Queen Eyes out now make sure you go run that up go stream that go check out the performance that's also out now go show Cranium some love go show Cranium some support love and support is free but y'all already knew that till next time on the radar my brother love boom Mad.